Hello and welcome to the Astro Flower weekly roundup of the uh, readings that we've been doing here on this channel. Uh, we're going to be connecting it to the solar activity, to the Earth's energy, to obviously to your elements and your qualities that are within your sign. If you want to see uh, your sign, there are links in the description below that will take you to uh, um, our page where you will be able to see your sign and see all the elements and the qualities that make up your astro flower. So um, let's just get first straight in here with a little bit of news on the sun. The sun's, um, I did an energy update on Cymatic TV, which you might want to go and have a look at, um, that went out earlier on as well today. Um, the sun has been shy in its energy towards the earth at the moment, let's be putting it that way. And when it's shy on its energy, uh, it's prana energy influencing the uh, earth's energy, then obviously influ influencing your energy, your chakra, uh, your chakras and your aura. Um, uh, it's going to obviously affect the energies that are within you. There are two notable things that are coming through the sun at the moment. One is that coronal hole, which you should be seeing around about now. Um, and that's earth energies. And that also affects like um, earthquakes and stuff like that. And you'll be able to see that over on Cymatic TV as well. Um, and so it's if you're looking at your flower, if you look at the earth elements that go through your flower, and everybody has some form of uh, earth elements that go through them, uh, it will be affecting those cards connected to those elements. Uh, that came through uh, roughly uh, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So that's when it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Um, that's when it's really affecting the earth. So that will uh, put a bit of slant on your readings. Go back and see your weekly reading if you need to in order to uh, get a, uh, um, uh, an explanation on each card which is connecting to those elements. It's also connected to fixed signs. Um, in the way of quality. So you may want to, if you're a fixed sign, also please go back and ha have a look at that. There was also a filament eruption which you should be seeing around about now. Beautiful thing. Uh, not really much came off in that, uh, in that eruption and that's water energy. So that's emotional energy and that's directed more towards mutable signs as well. Um, so that sort of energy will be affecting any waters that you have within your readings. As I said, it did come off uh, in, uh, behind the Earth, so it's not really going to be affecting it too much. And the e energy from the sun has been creating a lot of frustration, which I think came out in the weekly readings this week. The majority of people, or the majority of signs, seem to have a reading where the dust had settled from the uh, lunar eclipse, which came through at the beginning of this month. And with that frustration, uh, with that sort of settling of um, sort of that, that dust, as it were, from that lunar eclipse, it gave us a good hard look at what is going on around us. And it's a bit of a wake up call and things that we weren't noticing beforehand may be coming back up onto the surface that are causing us problems. And that could be to do with administration, um, to do with money, to do with jobs, that sort of thing. Um more though, so, more so than relationships, and I think that's more to do with the corona hole as well. Uh, it's it's created a situation where things need to get sorted. So you may have found yourself a little bit under the cosh in regards to um, in regards to the administration, the material world, basically. Okay, so uh, that's the basic energies that's sort of going behind that. As I say, there are links to your astro flower in the description below if you want to follow that in more detail. And it's much better to have an understanding of this sort of thing when you're looking at your weekly readings as well. Um, okay, so let's just go through how these sort of things connected um, uh, between the signs at the moment. So let's go. Um, let's go back to. Um, Let's treat it by, we're going to treat it by the elements and uh, then by the qualities. And then we're going to put it all together with a collective reading right at the end. So please stay with us right to the end to so you can see uh, that collective reading. Okay, so let's start off on air. Now, air was quite interesting, really. Um, there was a particular thing on uh, the financial sort of side, and that certainly came through uh, between Libra and Gemini, as you can well see here. There was that connection there between the two, um, and it was all to do with sort of bringing forth your expertise in your life. 
Um, and it was uh, also, uh, you had the nine of pentacles, which um, brought about, uh, is bringing about that idea of bringing fruits to the surface or uh, accomplishments within your life uh, to the surface, mainly on the financial side more than anything else. I think um, it was uh, those pentacles are sort of playing into that uh, more than anything else. There is one other thing to be said, and that is that everybody has our individual rhythms in life. And uh, Aquarius has is obviously moving into um, their autumn period, your autumn period. So these are the last three months before your birthday. And in like autumn, the leaves of our lives fall to the ground. And those leaves nourish the roots and going forth uh, of the memories of the last year, excuse me. <coughs> memories of the last year. So it can help us to organize what we want to do in the coming year. Now in that, uh, you had a connection with, as far as I can say, uh, as far as I can see, with, um, with Gemini. So there was a connection between Aquarius and Gemini. So the connection between the two, and this was quite interesting, was you had the Knight of Wands and the Six of Cups. So it is a little bit about of introspective sort of looking back and getting passionate about going forward. And it is all, it seemed to be all on the relationship side more than anything else. Um, so Aries, you're moving into that analysis of what you've been living over the last year and what you want to be living in the going future. So basically uh, on here, it's for Gemini and Libra, there is uh, a connection with connecting with your mastery and getting you into gear of what you're doing and doing it well, and you do do it well, and therefore it's gonna bring results to the surface. And Aquarius and Gemini, um, Aquarius and Gemini, there is a little bit of retrospective. So you Geminis are getting it all at the moment by by the looks of things. But we'll see this also within the uh, qualities that we go through. So there you go, Air. Uh, if you want to see, uh, you can see on the screen here. If you want to see where they're connected to and how they're connected to the elements, and see how that connects into the sun, as I say, go down in the description below, and you'll see a link with that. Uh, the elements and the qualities that are in there. Moving on to fire signs. Now, fire signs um, seem to have a lot more sort of connection in regards to Leo fixed and Sagittarius mutable. Now, mutable Sagittarius, you're moving into your season. So happy birthday to any Sagittarians who have this uh, this week, your birthday. Um, welcome to your new year. Um, and this is uh, this connection with Leo, it brings out uh, the Lovers, uh, the Seven of Swords, and the Ten of Pentacles. So basically, uh, it's it was two different things because Leah had the Lovers on the on your financial side, and Sagittarius you had it on your emotional sort of side. So it was connecting with uh, Sagittarius. You're going to be connecting emotionally uh, in this week with people that are around you, which is a good thing, and that will give you that sort of. Uh, because it's got that connection with Leo, it'll give you that sort of determination to get it right, as it were. The other connection here is is the Seven of Swords and the Ten of Pentacles. Now, the Ten of Pentacles came out on the emotional side of Leo, but on the material side of Sagittarius. And the uh, that's basically sort of saying you have those resources that are, are behind you, and it's all to do with the karmic path. For Leo, you are on the uh, karmic path on your on your relationship side, and the karmic message. And on Sagittarius, it was on your emotional side. The most interesting thing, and this is the thing that really sticks out, certainly for these two signs here, Leo and Sagittarius, is that Seven of Swords because it came out in exactly the same position. And this is where your guides are trying to help you to play smart. And, and this is playing smart on the financial sort of level. For Leos, it was connecting your emotional connection to your work and your job and your and your projects. For um, Sagittarius, it's connecting with that karmic mission, that Ten of Pentacles going forward. Therefore, it's putting into action the plans that you want to have this week. There was one other thing, and I would say that Aries, I haven't really mentioned you much yet, so Aries, You've been standing alone here. It's, it's almost as if you're in your summer 
uh, period, fully into your summer period, and things should be really motoring along nicely for you at the moment. The um, the, the connection that was uh, between yourself and the other cards is, well, the other signs was mainly between Aries and Leo. Now, Aries and Leo, you have that connection that's because your um, Leo is almost borrowing the fire from your pure sign. Uh, Leo had this um, and yourselves had the five of cups. Now, this is the same thing. It is in opposites. Leo, you've got it on your um, financial sort of side and uh, Aries, you had it on your relationship side. So there was a lot of more um, invention for the Aries after a moment of disappointment. I think um, the uh, I think the universe, and you'll have to go back to see your weekly uh, reading on this, but I think the universe was sort of saying, don't be disappointed in life. Do get on, uh, ex ex express yourself. I think the main thing was about it. So you're not disappointed. On the Leo side of life, if you're playing smart, you may uh, expose or discover people, if you've taken out your emotions into the situation, uh, how your job, your business and your projects will actually expose people who you might consider being disappointing as you go forward. Let's move on to earth signs. Now, earth signs, there was very um, smaller connections between you and they seem to be covering quite a different um different sort of uh, groups really you had Capricorn who's in their autumn period so they're very much you're very much in the reflection of life at the moment and you had the connection with um, Taurus uh, in regards to a tower moment now you uh, Capricorn had it within your financial in uh, financial life and it's basically what's going on underneath I think you've got a lot on your plate at the moment. There's a lot of stress coming in from the emotional, um, from the financial sort of side or material side of life, uh, which is clearing out a lot of space. Make sure you just keep on top of it one thing after another. Um, for you, uh, Tauruses, you had this emotional sort of um, tower moment. So it's clearing a bit of space. Uh, it may be causing you a bit of stress emotionally in regards to your connections with other people, but I trust in you, Taurus. You have that strength and determination to move forward, uh, certainly with that uh, king of wands that is just above where it's in that connection within you. So I would listen to yourself and you can manifest a great future going forward. The other connection was the eight of pentacles. Now this came up with Virgo, and Virgo, you seem to have a really good thing where there's a lot going on for you at the moment, striving to be your best, moving into working with other people, which was really good. And this Eight of Pentacles came up also, I think it came up within the air signs. Uh, yeah, it did. It came up within the air signs as well, which is the next sign along for you, which will be a uh, Libra sign as well. Um, and uh, for you... Um, Tauruses, because you had it in your karmic message, um, you know, you'll be connecting to the Gemini sign, and it was in their sign as well. I've got, let me just have a quick check and make sure. Um, Gemini, Eight of Pentacles, it, it came out in the surface of them. So basically, it's organizing things for yourself. Sorry about that, Taurus. It's organizing things, and it's within you at the moment. Um, it's within your karmic path on your emotional side of life. So bringing towards your expertise of being sure about yourself is going to bring out some really good victories at the end. The other last thing, and that's an uh, interesting uh, one, is for you Capricorns and for you Tauruses as well. You had it in um, your karmic path on Tor in Capricorn. So it was all about planning. It's all about your autumn period. It's all about planning for your future, getting rid of a few things, keeping that clear thinking within your mind. And for you, Tauruses, it was about how the universe is trying to influence your physical path at the moment. So I would be guided by the universe, guided by what's going on around you at the moment. So then you can plan for that future going forward. Try not to procrastinate. Okay, so there you go, uh, signs. Virgo, you're killing it. Keep killing it. I love it. Okay, uh, let's move on to um, water signs. So water signs here, there was a lot of connection between um, 
between uh, Cancer and Pisces uh, going through here. So Cancer and Pisces, you had the um, Page of Wands, the Knight of Pen the Knight of Wands, and the Death card. So Cancer and Pisces, you're really going through a transitional period at the moment. You're the only two that, um, so this is water signs at the moment, uh, the only signs that not in their, there's not one of them within their autumn period. So um, you've definitely got a period here, we've got a moment here where there's a lot of, um, let's say, uh, passion about the new cycle that's going on. Cancer, you should be getting really fully into your stride. For you, Pisces, it's more about having that passion that comes from within and allowing that passion to come out through your relationships, through your emotional sort of side. And you're going to nail it, I think, this week. I think it's going to pr provide a lot more security within you if you concentrate on the here and now and allow yourself to be a little bit like a kid for it. The death card came in on the physical side. So this is connecting um, Cancer and Pisces. Now, Cancer, you're a pure, um, pi sorry, Pisces, you're a pure water sign. Um, so you have um, uh, all the water that goes all the way around you, whereas Cancer has water and earth going through you. And this plays in, um, this plays into, uh, into um, the material side. And you both had uh, death and uh, rebirth card on the physical and material side. So everything is really tying through that quite nicely. Cancer, you seem to be connecting to everyone. Uh, you've connected with Scorpio with the Wheel of Fortune. So, and it's up within the surface or the emotional side, the relationship side. So you can feel and you can you can really taste that change of fortunes within your life. Scorpio, you've just started your new year. So it should be moving on. There's a lot of manifestation going on. There's a call to um, uh, call to action. You had a really good reading, actually, I think, uh, Scorpio. You had some really beautiful cards. And that Wheel of Fortune came in um, uh, came in on how the universe is trying to influence you and then starting this new path. So as Cancer has got it fully within your charge at the moment, Scorpio, it's coming up through you at the moment. And you can share that sort of earth side, directional sort of side of Cancer uh, as it plays uh, through you. Uh, so you can use that earth energy which came through on the sun, which we were talking about earlier on. So Scorpio, just get on and go ahead. There's little connection that you have at the moment with your fellow water signs, and it's mainly to do with Pisces and Cancer. I think this is because you have started off on this direction and you're taking this direction and going forth. I would concentrate on the little things that are happening in front of you and just go on and do it. Uh, basically. Okay, so let's get into um, the qualities. Um, let's start off with a fixed sign. So Scorpio, thank you for staying with us. Um, here we go into Scorpio. So the main thing that seemed to come out here is the uh, Three of Swords. And this came out for a lot of different signs, actually. And, um, and it mainly came out in uh, also, I think, in, uh, in fixed signs, as I was saying. Um, so it came out, um, uh, it was uh, opposite. So for um, Taurus and Leo, now Taurus has earth and fire and Leo has fire and earth. Now this is quite interesting because the universe was influencing uh, Taurus on the emotional side and the relationship side of life. Whereas Leo, it's been doing it on your financial side, but it's in the same position in petals one and four in regards to how the universe is influencing your life. Um, so there was this sort of idea, and in, in Aquarius, it was taking the emotions out of it. It was maybe a little bit of emotional stress because it's in petal six, that is in our main internal petal, as it were, our inner, inner being, as it were. So it's taking a lot of emotions out of the situation, not only to help you, but to help other people that are around you. But particularly with uh, Aquarius, it's to help you realize what you've been doing over the last year and what you want to be doing in the going future. There was some other main minor card connections. So that's connection between mainly two signs. And as you can see in this picture below, you have the um, uh, magician, 
the uh, emperor, uh, the uh, empress. So there's divine intervention, there's divine connection between the pair of you. Um, the six of wands and the ace of pentacles. Now, um, it connected in different ways. So you had air and water that was connected in the ace of pentacles. Um, the magician was connected through um, Taurus and Scorpio, which is the manifestation of those two eclipse seasons going through it. Um, with the Six of Wands, uh, the Six of Wands was connected through um, ba -ba -ba -ba, Taurus, sorry, and Taurus and ba -ba -ba, Scorpio again. So this is um, this is this manifestation of bringing it forth to uh, a situation with Taurus. It's going to be in your moment in your here and now as you're dealing with it with Scorpio it's coming through you but that's just connecting those two eclipse seasons that you we went through this year and this is where the dust is settling and it's helping Scorpio to actually move on uh, which has been really good with the um high priestess the high priestess we had a connection between I will get there in a second uh high priestess is uh, it's not on there. Uh, obviously, that was not... Uh, yes, it was. Uh, sorry, yes, it is. We're getting to Taurus and Scorpio. So it's all about Taurus and Scorpio at the moment. That's really interesting. Uh, Taurus and Scorpio, you really are in tune here. And I think this has to do with the, um, with, the, um, with, the, with the eclipse going on. The only other one connection was between Taurus and Leo. And that is that emperor energy. And then that's that combination between earth and fire. And this is how the sun is going to be affecting you. So for Leo, it's definitely going to be affecting how the universe influences your emotional path with other people, because you're going to have your earth at that base. For Taurus, you're going to have that earth at um, uh, earth at the top. And also um, it's going to it's going to be inverted a little bit to your fire. So it's going to be using a little bit of the uh, you're going to need to use a little bit of resources, both sides. You're going to need to lose a little bit of your resources that is within you in order to take that position of the emperor. So there's a lot of connections going on here. The only other thing I think um, uh, was Aquarius. Now, Aquarius, you did also have that emperor card, which I've missed off here. I do apologize. That should be up with the three of swords. Um, that is playing in on your physical side and it's your karmic message. And I think it's a case of just sitting there and taking it in, um, uh, taking it on board and really getting to grips of where you want to be next year in your material life. So it will be good to reflect on that during this week. Let's just go into the mutable signs. So let's move on to the mutables and how they're connecting between them all. At the moment, you've got mutables um sagittarius that's going through your autumn period uh so it's um and because of that i think there is a case of um a, a case of uh, making a connection but not really totally there and that tends to be a thing for mutables because mutables are very versatile they move from one to another they can be very cardinal in their actions but they can also be very fixed in their actions and this is what gives them their very their particularities. So they only had signs, uh, cards that were connecting between each particular one, uh, where it's only connecting between two signs. So you have the lovers, the, the knight of wands, the ace of cups, which we will be uh, going through a little bit later on, the three of pentacles and the ten of pentacles. Now, uh, the ten of pentacles, that played out in um, Sagittarius and Virgo. So you're very close to one another. Um, you're connecting through um, petal... Um, Petal 4, uh, which gives you the call of action to Sagittarius, where you're going to be able to use that Earth energy of uh, Virgo. And that's played in also to how the sun affects you. And that Ten of Pentacles was in there here and now. So that's forcing through it. And I think that comes out beautifully within your karmic message of how you position yourself going forward as you start to go through your birthday period. We also... Um, uh, the other thing that was playing out on the uh, material sort of side was that three of pentacles. Now, that played out between uh, Virgo and Pisces. Now, Virgo and Pisces are obviously opposite each other within the um, astro flower or the uh, astrological wheel, as it were. And it came out beautifully within the material side. So this is all about working with other people. For you, Virgo, 
go and get it. You're meant to be connecting with people around you and that's your karmic mission at the moment, networking at the moment. Uh, so you can connect for a future where you can um, uh, build upon your job, your business and your projects. But for you, Pisces, it's observing the connection with other people through coincidences that are around you. And that plays beautifully to connect the physical and emotional side of life. As you are due to pure signs, it will be very, um, I would say, um, obvious and direct for you. Okay. The lover's cards that came out between uh, the water signs of Pisces and the fire sign of Sagittarius. Now they came out on opposite sides. It was in your karmic position, Pisces with the queen of swords. So then um, as you connect yourself with your uh, job and your businesses, it will give you, you've got to have a clarity of thought at the same time. For you, Sagittarius, it's the rebirth of your emotional year. So it's connecting with other people and it may even be a new love that's coming your way. This will help one another. This will, where um, Pisces will be able to um, uh, uh, bring in the connection to uh, Sagittarius, give you a bit more sort of emotional stability uh, within that connection and those, those coincidences within your petal um, five. Um, but uh, it will also be connecting through petal four, that new beginning with you in Pisces, and you'll be able to bring in that fire from, um, uh, that fire or air, that clarity of thought into that. And I think this is where Sagittarius lends it to you through the Queen of Swords. The um, the passionate side uh, comes out um, through um, Gemini and Pisces. Now, Gemini and Pisces, you have the, um, the, uh, the Knight of Swords, sorry, did I say the Queen of Swords? Knight of Swords playing out with you, Pisces, that is within you and bringing that passion out within you. And you do have that fire that curves round your petal six. So that is that fire that's lent to you from Aries. Um, and that brings out that passional sort of rhythm in life. It's keeping things going. You're going to be very much on the ball and here and now. Um, for you, um, uh, for you, Sagittarius, is it? No, for you, um, Gemini, sorry. It's within that emotional sort of life. And it's going to bring in that sort of um, continual rhythm within your relationships and your emotions that are going to build up a passion. And it's sort of saying to you, get in rhythm with life in a way. Uh, that sort of plays it into that sort of aspect of it all. The Ace of Cups. Now, this is a particular thing about the Ace of Cups because it came up in Gemini and Sagittarius. Now, if you look at Gemini, Gemini is an air sign with a fire bottom. Uh, so bottom or fire minor element, which they have lent to you from Aries. But Sagittarius, you are fire with air at the bottom. It's exactly the opposite to um, uh, Gemini. And you're both what we would call full signs. Uh, it's the same as Capricorn and Cancer. They are both full signs. So you've actually got more air in Sagittarius than you do fire. And you have more fire in Gemini than you do air. It's just the surface of how that is translated into your everyday life, basically. So you have this connection between you two here in lots of different ways, um, and it plays through with this Ace of Cups. And the thing is, it was in exactly the same position on your material side. So it's that conversation that is coming through the pair of you as you... Um, a Gemini go in from your um, winter season into your spring season, uh, if, if that's right. Yes, that's correct. Um, you're going through your winter season, no, through, through your spring season into your summer season, which goes right through to Pisces season. So it's going to bring that passion up into you. Uh, Sagittarius, you're bringing back into life. You're coming back through your... Um, uh, your birthday season, so that's bringing that passion also within the new uh, with the new vi uh, new uh, direction that you're taking. So I think that's really important for you two signs there to lead with your heart on the material side. Okay, so uh, yes, moving on to and moving on to and moving on to cardinal signs. So cardinal signs, we have uh, the air of Libra. Aries, Cancer, and Capricorn. Now, this was really interesting. Cap um, cardinal signs, there seems to be about direction. And I think this is all about the um, 
the settling of the energies of um, um, the settling of the energies uh, going from the lunar eclipse. So um, settling of the, 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 the dust as the dust settles from it. And this is where direction comes into it, where we can see very clearly. And this gave a really good connection between all cardinal signs because cardinal signs gives that sort of direction. The, the two, there was two cards that came up in three um, um, readings. So that was the tower and the moon. And it's basically here, uh, the tower came up um, uh, mainly on the uh, physical side. So that came up in Capricorn and in Cancer. So it was making a bit of clearing out and stuff like that. Uh, making a bit of space for you to be absolutely clear. For you, Libra, it made a bit of space on your emotional sort of front. But it's connected to the moon with um, Libra because it's opposite. So it's putting into a bit of balance and making things, um, exposing things that you may not have seen before. Um, with um, with uh, Aries and uh, Cancer, you had it on your emotional side. So this was all to do with how the universe is trying to expose things for you in Cancer and giving you that direction uh, in areas of um, with the moon or the uh, the yeah with the moon card in your karmic message um, position, which helps you to understand of that's what you need to be exposing sort of things, expressing yourself, exposing things within yourself as well. So that was on the emotional sort of side, and it really gave a connection between all three. The other, the other cards that gave connections was the Death and Rebirth, the Ten of Wands, the Eight of Pentacles, and the Hangman. So it was basically starting new cycles between Aries and Cancer again, with the Death card both playing out on the material side of life. And um, it plays out on the Eight of Pentacles, which came in for Cancer and Libra, which you are connected through petals for. Um, and this was, it was all playing out through the interior of you. So there's obviously a lot of arrangement that's going on within that section of the cycle of the astro flower. Uh, so you can get into your mastery, uh, into the uh, into the mastery within your life. Um, the 10 of wands, now that played out in, um, uh, the 10 of wands played out in, I will just say, uh, Aries, and du, 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 maybe I got that wrong. Did I get that wrong? I didn't think I did. Yeah, it's not in there. So I should, um, I should be, oh no, it did. It did Aries and Aries and Libra. Now they are opposite signs. And we saw that in the um, mutables as well with, um, uh, with Pisces and Virgo. So that, um, that, um, that loading a little bit too much uh, of you maybe in uh, areas that you need to express things and it's also within you Libra so you can feel things that are building up and you can play off one another here uh, it'll help you out a lot the other connection that might have uh, been between the two of you um, let's see I think it was the hangman I'm just trying to clarify that uh, no, the hangman was only in Libra. Um, it was in Libra and Cancer again. So uh, this is where this side of uh, uh, the um, the astro flower is playing in with that um, that um, that death uh, that uh, that um, yes that hangman, but also uh, is the um, the tower moment that's going through, and that's going to give you a little bit of clarity of seeing things a little bit differently. OK, so um, there is a lot of connections. I think mainly for the cardinal signs is a case of just striking out there and going for it. Um, moving forward, Capricorn is a particular one because you're going through your um, your autumn period. And there was only really the moon and or, or the sorry, the tower moment really that sort of came through that gave you the connections to your other signs. The rest of it is a lot about personal sort of stuff. So for Aries. Uh, Libra and Cancer, you should be striking out there at the moment. So let's just get on with that collective reading. What a week. What a week it's been. I'm a Capricorn, so I'm in my winter period. So uh, autumn period, sorry. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's phenomenal week. 
uh, as I say, on the you'll find a little bit more about that on Cymatic TV. Let's just get on um, which I've done an energy update. It'll be linked at the end of this uh, end of this uh, uh, this reading. Let's just go through what the overall energies are going on for the collective reading for us. It's like a, a dustpan and brush. You know what I mean? There's it's it's out with the old and in with the new. That's what it seems like. It's all to do with rhythm, patience, and it's going to take time to clear. Uh, it's going to take time to put things into place, I think, for everybody uh, this week. Uh, and it's just being patient with life, I think. It came out there in a lot of uh, things where there's a lot of people wanting to get on and moving on and stuff like that. Um, and that seems to be the overall message for everybody. But you've got to be a little bit patient, and I will keep that patience within us. Let's just have a look on the spiritual sort of side. Let's see what's going on in the karmic message of the um, collective you we need to connect on a on a level that is um through this understanding and this patience i think um and giving each other space you may not agree with everybody else um you will not agree with everybody else and everybody else will not necessarily agree with you there's obviously going to be people that you connect with and everything like that but it's because someone has an opposite point of view or a different point of view, just be gentle with one another. I think that's the most important thing here. Yeah, I think it's a passage. I think uh, we've got a rite of passage here. I think if we can, it's almost as like the dust is settling. We're sort of saying, okay, let's see how this first week goes, basically. I think that's karmically at the moment. Don't bring out judgment within it all. Let's see how the universe is influencing this karmic message. The time is now and you have it and we have everything. With time is now and we have everything. It's nurturing that future. It's now starting to put into place a spiritual reckoning, I think, uh, and how we deal with each other, uh, how we interact with one another. I think it's really important. And the universe is trying to nourish that, not to, trying to you know, nurture that sort of connection with one another. Let's just see how the guides or our ancestors are trying to help us out here. There's a lot of clapping. There's, there's a possibility here is if to sort of say, we can get this. We can have this going forward. Um, they're really encouraging and cheering us on. Um, yeah, I think it's because we're starting to see the underbelly of each other of how we connect with one another. Very interesting that that's also to do with that lunar thing that came out in all the cardinal signs. Um and at the moment, none of these other none of these other cards came out with connections. You'll have to look at your weekly reading, see if it connected within your personal uh, personal reading. But I think here is where the you know, our ancestors are through the connections, through the coincidences. They're trying to sort of bring to the surface things that you know we don't like to look at, basically. And I think it's good to look at it, give it a good clean look, so we're not actually um, you know. Uh, you know, don't have to have it coming back on the surface in the future. Let's just see how the guides are trying to influence the conversation that is within us. I just need to check something. Hang on a second. My flower wasn't in 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 focus. So yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, um, let's just see what the conversation is within us. It's like after a party, it's, it's almost, I went into this on the um, energy update as well. We're like going through a little bit of the COVID hangover period. And um, it's realizing what we did last night in that party and some of the things we may regret. And it's good to uh, look at the things that we regret. And it, yeah, it's, it's just seeing how wonderful that connection is is between us all. It could be a bit of a tower moment. Uh, it could be a bit of a realization. For some people, obviously, who are not very open to energy and stuff like that, they may find it very traumatizing uh, for them. But anybody who's open to energy and that knows how energy works and that good and bad doesn't really exist, and it's good to expose the things that... Uh, I, I wanna say what we're ashamed of collectively. Um, <coughs> But 
I think it's going to clear out a lot of things and allow a lot of sort of beautiful connections to be coming through this week. Um, let's just see how uh, what the karmic message is for the um, financial sort of side of life. Skating on thin ice. So I, I, I think this has to do with the... I did do the uh, clips reading, which um, you might want to have a go in collective clips reading. And this might well have something to do with the January anomaly, which I'm calling the January February anomaly. It says skating on thin ice. Yeah, there is victories to be had, but I think it's connecting uh, at the moment. It's sort of saying to us, it's reiterating that message that we need to connect in the way of jobs, businesses, finances, and that sort of thing, in re in regards to respecting one another uh, and getting that respect out there. Uh, and we don't seem to have cottoned on to that as yet. Uh, it's something that needs to be done. A new cycle has to be made. We have to walk away from the old cycle, basically. Walking away from the old cycle will open the doors to the future, going forward to the new cycle uh, that we need to live in order for us to have that evolutionary process, to have that ascension moment as the Earth goes through the pole shift. Let's just see how the um, universe is influencing this karmic message. It's not going to, the universe is not going to give up on us, but at the same time, the universe keeps turning. And at the end of the day, if we miss the opportunity, we miss the opportunity. And I think this is really important this week. Uh, I think this is seizing upon opportunities going forward. That's what the Ace of Swords is all about. Seizing upon that opportunity. This new cycle that we were just talking about. Moving forward. Cutting through the... Um, cutting through the... The, the 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 waste or the or the stuff that is really holding us back the red tape or the um you know the restrictions in life let's just see how the um how our ancestors are trying to influence on this this side we're focusing on money but it's not really about the money we've got to let money slide away um yeah let go of that that eternal conflict that money has created within each and every single one of us build it upon respect i think as we, as we do going forward and maybe there's going to be a little bit of a headache coming up that we're going to realize within the economy within the world economy that we're going to have to deal with and that ties into that patience card um on the temperance there um and all to do with our rhythms uh and and that January February anomaly basically and which will probably come out in the work in the year readings which will be um, um, coming out in December let's just see uh, what's going on on the uh, conversation that is within us seems to be a lot of uncertainty and people are looking in the wrong direction I think we need to look differently at the world at the moment um yeah i think if if we're looking in the wrong direction we're not going to see the opportunities that are being offered to us and i think these offers these opportunities are connected to um a very emotional sort of side of connection through finance and business of that respect for one another that respect for the planet we are only custodians on this planet and i think if if we start really taking the time out in order to look at it clearly it's going to make um, the pressure on the economy uh, a, le a lot less. So we, you know, that skating on thin ice will not cause us too much of a problem going forward. But we do need to sort of offer up solutions. And I think this is what's going to come into the collective thinking this week. Let's just see how it plays out between everybody at the um, how these both sides sort of play out. Honesty. And I think this is going to be honesty with one another and each other. The Ten of Pentacles. Now that came out with you, Virgo. And Virgo, you were humdinging it and on fire. Uh, just trying to see who else had the... Um, uh, uh, yeah, so um, and I think this came out in the cardinal energies as well here, which is going to be applying a lot as well with the moon. 
it seems to be on the spiritual sort of side the cardinal energies are going to give us a little bit of uh, direction going on here and then it's a case of the mutables to sort of go between to sort things out uh, of how we're going to do this and then the fix will actually put it into sort of place we all work together here we're all in the same boat and no one's going anywhere we've got everything at our uh, fingertips if we so desire okay uh, there you go. You will be getting your weeklies uh, coming out. That's Thursday, Friday and Saturday. And that's for Fix, and Mutable and Cardinals. And we should be doing this reading, the summing up of the collective uh, on the Sunday as well. But in the meantime, everybody out there, thank you very much for your support for this channel. I really do appreciate it. And uh, with one another, arm in arm, we can certainly make this world a better place. In the meantime, don't forget, life should be fun, so please do enjoy.